Deep under their Los Angeles apartment, three siblings find a book that has bad news written all over it. This book just so happens to be another entry in the demonic Necronomicon. Upon opening the book, bloodthirsty demons run amok and possess their neighbors and loved ones. After the children's mother is possessed, it's up to their aunt to get them out of this hellish nightmare. This is Evil Dead Rise. Evil Dead Rise is the latest film in the Evil Dead franchise. And it's the first film in the franchise in exactly 10 years. I didn't even see the 2013 Evil Dead movie, but realizing it came out 10 years ago still makes me feel really old. Now I'll admit, when I first heard this film was coming out and Bruce Campbell's Ash Williams was not going to be a part of it, I thought to myself, in the immortal words of Ethan Winters, That's not groovy. And yes, maybe it's because I'm spoiled because of all the other nostalgia bait in so many other movies nowadays, but can you blame me? It's Bruce Campbell. But my expectations aside, Evil Dead Rise is still well in tune with the fun, campy horror the franchise is known for. Leading this film as the mandatory Evil Dead badass is Lily Sullivan, whose performance and character has all of the makings of the perfect horror leading lady. The performance she gives, as well as the character that's written for her, is great. And her relationship with the kid characters in the film, played by Morgan Davis, Gabriel Eccles, and Nell Fisher, is a really strong one too. But what's an Evil Dead movie without a shit-talking demon? Because man, does this film deliver on that. I know horror movies aren't typically on the Oscars radar, but man, does Alyssa Sutherland deserve an award for this film. She is phenomenal in this movie. Words cannot describe just how entertaining and scary she is equally. An easy top tier horror villain performance. I think a lot of that has to do with the writing of Deadites. Now, I'm not too sure how Deadites work. Are they one individual demon? Are they like a hive mind of sorts? Because in this film, it seems like it could go both ways. Either way they work, Deadites in general are just the biggest shitters ever. The way Deadites are written is the most entertaining thing to me. And when you pair that up with a phenomenal performance, you're gonna get something magical, and this film is definitely that. I will admit, I think I find the film to be a bit more gross than it is scary, but being grossed out is still more than a valid response to a horror film. Because man, there is so much blood in this movie. Now, I'm not the type of person to, you know, be grossed out by blood, but when it's coming out of every orifice you're allowed to show in a rated R movie, it's kind of, it's kind of gross. And you also probably won't look at cheese graters the same way after this film. I'm not letting go even for cheese graters! But what surprised me the most with this film is that it still retains the Evil Dead camp and fun you come to know from the franchise. Again, most of that has to do with the fact that the Deadites are perfectly written as the biggest assholes on the planet. But also, it's just a really fun horror movie. Which is surprising for me to say because the setting of the movie is not particularly the most fun thing. A single mom raising her three kids in a crummy Los Angeles apartment? Sounds like a fun movie to me, right? This movie does make me question the ethicalness of featuring kids in horror movies. Nell Fisher plays the youngest of the three kids in this film, and they put her through a lot in this film, both the character and the actress. And she's great in the movie, as is her character, but I have to wonder, does she actually get to see this movie? Always wondered that with kids in horror movies, because I wouldn't be allowed to see a horror movie at that age, let alone star in one. There are two scenes in the movie that feel a bit derivative of other scenes you've seen in other movies before. There's one scene that I'm sure was just a homage to The Shining, but there's another one that was just a scene from Lilo and Stitch. They take the exact idea from Lilo and Stitch and put it in this movie. Why would you do that? I think my biggest criticism with the movie is a pretty unique one. It almost starts out too strong. That isn't to say the second half of the film was bad by any means, I just think the second half was just not as strong as the first half. It's almost like a Resident Evil game in a way. Take Resident Evil 4. In either version, you got the village, which is great, you got the castle, which is great, and then you got the island. In fact, this whole movie is kind of like a good Resident Evil movie. Interesting. But aside from that one problem that really isn't that big of a problem, this is still a real groovy film. 
The cast and characters are all great, the scares are all really fun, and the Deadites are all written and performed to perfection. If you're an Evil Dead fan or a horror fan in general, this is definitely worth your time. I hope you all enjoyed this review, and if you did, please consider hitting that like button, and if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to be notified when my next review drops. Oh, and by the way, check out the website. Until next time, I'm Quint Dunaway, hoping you will keep it cinematic.